Hi, welcome to Actual LOL, I'm John Perkis. Today I want to introduce you to five card games you could play with anyone. Sometimes you just need a really, really simple game to play with your parents or teach someone that hates rules or someone that gets confused really easily. These games are perfect for that situation. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and if you want to support more videos like this, go to patreon.com forward slash actualol. Thank you. All of the games in this video are small, affordable and make great gifts. If you'd like to buy any of them, there are links in the description below. This is Loot, a pirate card game. In your hand, you have merchant ships and pirate ships. And on your turn, you can do one of three things. You can draw a new card, you can play a merchant ship, or you can attack someone's merchant ship by playing a pirate ship next to it. This is the point. You want to get the gold from the merchant ships. You want to win them. You have to decide when is the best time to play a merchant ship and put it up for grabs in the table because as soon as you put it down, other players will take their turns and they will pay pirates onto it trying to win it. But when it comes back round to you, you can try and win it back off them by playing more skulls on your pirate cards. You win a merchant ship at the start of your turn when you have more pirate skulls than the other pirates attacking your ship. But if we're tied, then it stays in play until someone breaks the deadlock giving the other players an opportunity to jump in and steal it. The game is all about timing. If you have the merchant ship with eight gold on it, the only one in the game, you have to pick the right time to put it out and available for everyone. When other players have less pirate ships in their hand and you think you'll be the one that can win it. There's a real balance you need to strike between knowing when to attack a merchant ship because you think you've got the cards to win it and when to just spend your turn drawing up more cards to bolster future attacks. There are four special pirate cards in the game that if played, trump any other type of ship so you automatically win unless someone else plays a pirate card and then the last one played wins. The simplicity of loot is that you either pick up a card or play a card. It's a game about knowing when to pick your battles. Do you go for this merchant ship? Do you definitely think you can win it? Or should you bide your time, get more cards and build for a future battle that you will definitely win? Trying to get the most gold and competing with the other players to win ships has a real nice sense of competition and there's always surprises in the game with when the pirate cards come out. That's loot. Everything on one card is a modern take on Yahtzee. You're rolling colored dice to try and fill up lines on your two cards to get the most points. You roll the dice and you have the opportunity to re-roll twice so you can keep some set aside and roll again hoping to get certain colors. Then once you're done, you have to take those dice and fill in the spaces on one of your cards. You can't split them across the two cards. So you have to pick which card uses the most amount of the dice. If you ever roll more of a color than you can fit in on a row, you can't put any of that color in that turn. So you have to be very careful when you're rolling the dice. If you have two red come up, do you take the risk and roll the other dice again to try and get more of another color that you want or do you just stick there knowing that you'll finish your row? Once you've finished at least three rows, you score the card and set it off to the side and then draw another one. But if you're able to finish off a fourth or fifth row on the same turn, you get to score those rows as well. You can get two or five points if you complete the rows with the suns next to them. So it really forces you into certain directions to try and get certain colors, which means you generally get stuck into scrapes where you're re-rolling your dice, trying to get those colors, and you end up not really getting anything that you want. What keeps the game interesting for the other players on your turn is that they get to cross off the same colors that you rolled. So they can be watching you rolling the dice hoping that you're going to give them the colors that they need to finish off their rows. And you can even look at their cards and make decisions based on not trying to help them out too much. The game ends when one player finishes their fourth card and you see who have the most points. You have to decide, do you want to get the most points out of your cards or do you want to race to the finish and get in ahead of the other players? Everything on one card has the appeal of bingo, where you're all playing at the same time and you're trying to finish off your rows before the other players. But it all comes down to the decisions the players make. Do you push your luck and keep rolling the dice 
to try and get the colors you need? Do you look at the other player's cards and try and pick colors that they don't want? And do you try and finish off a card completely or do you race on to the next one to try and get to the end quicker? It's a simple dice game that's reminiscent of older games, so really easy to teach to your parents or grandparents. But for me, it's got enough modern twists to keep me interested. Duck is a little card game about trying to get rid of your cards and knowing when to go for the win. You start with seven cards and on your turn you can discard some of them. Either a run of at least three cards in consecutive order or a set of the same number of any amount. When you play some cards, you have to draw one up either from the top of the deck or from the two discard piles of the players to your left and your right. So you can see those two cards and see if they work with cards that you already have to try and create sets in the future. It means that even when you're discarding cards, you always have to draw up into your hand unless you can create a set that uses all your remaining cards. You play them and you win the round and you get the top card of the score pile. But it's not easy to get rid of all your cards. Thankfully, there's another way to finish the round, to duck out. If the total of your cards is under 10 and you think your total is lower than all the other players' total, you can say duck on your turn, reveal your cards, and everyone else will reveal theirs. And if you have the lowest total, you win that round. Not only do you get the scorecard, but you also get the highest card that you have left in your hand and it becomes points for the end of the game. So it's actually better to duck out but it's a bigger risk because you don't know what cards other players have. Knowing when to duck is the challenge of this game and it's so much fun taking that gamble, making that risk. Sometimes you might do it with a total of eight and win. Other times you might have a total of three and someone else has got two and you just had no idea because they've got two zero cards in their hand. Duck has the feel of classic card games like Rummy because you're picking up cards and trying to create sets, but with the added twist of ducking out and knowing when to take the big risk and seeing if it pays off, which makes it so much more entertaining. Truffle Shuffle is a game of collecting sets of cards and trading them in for points. On your turn, you take one of the available cards from the display adding it to your hand. You're trying to create sets that you can trade in for points. So at the end of my turn, I will trade in this large straight flush for nine points. And I take the nine coins that that set gives me. At first, you can only draw from the first row, but as people take cards from the first row, it unlocks later cards. And in the first row, they're face up, so you know exactly what you're getting. But the second and fourth row are face down. You can see the color of the card, so you know what suit it is, but you don't know what number you'll get. So you can plan ahead at the start of the round and see what cards are gonna be available and what cards you think you'll get, aiming for certain types of sets, hoping that the other players won't get those cards before you do. And there's a nice gamble to taking a face down card and hoping that you get something that works with what you need. The sets are really easy to follow and reminiscent of poker. You can have straights and straight flushes, number sets which are like five fives. The harder the set is, the more points you'll get for it. So there's a real incentive to try and wait until you can complete the perfect set. But if you wait too long to finish your perfect set, the round will end and you won't get to keep all of your cards until the next round, so you've wasted a lot of your time. And the first sets that are completed in a round get a bonus two points, so you really wanna race in ahead of the other players and maybe finish some easier sets just to get those extra points. And there are special cards which will help you complete your sets quicker. Color change allows you to change the color of a card that you have so that you can make a perfect set of all the same color. Take two means that you can take two cards at the same time, which will allow you to take one card and the card that it then unlocks. And there are wild cards which can either be any color or any number. I love that in this game, you can see the color of the cards that the other players are collecting because it's shown on the back. So you know whether they're gonna try and get the cards that you want. Where the game gets especially interesting is when there's only a few cards available and you know that you want some of these locked cards and as soon as you take this, it will be available to the other players. So which card do you take? 
which ones do you then make available to the next players and which ones will still be there when it comes back round to you. And it's such an easy game to teach because all the cards are laid out on the table so you can show players exactly what cards they can take. Turns are really quick because all you do is pick up a card each turn and it's amazing how invested you can get into this game. How stressed out you can be just watching someone as they might take the card that you really need. Truffle Shuffle is such a simple, engaging game that plays well with two to four players that it feels timeless. Llama and Llama Party are a little like the popular card game Uno, except much better. On your turn, you have to play one of your cards and you have to follow the card that's already there, either playing the same one or one higher. You're trying to get rid of all of your cards because they're worth minus points. But when it comes to your turn and you can't play one, you have to pick up off the deck. Or you can pass out of the round and no longer take any turns. You will take those cards as minus points, but it stops you from picking up even worse cards that then end you up in an even worse situation. If you're lucky and you're able to play your last card, then you win the round and everyone else is stuck with the cards left in their hand. You get a minus point for the value of the card. So this card is worth one minus point. But if you have more than one of the same number, they only count for one card. So these twos are only worth two minus points. You take your minus points in tokens and then play another round. The game carries on until one player reaches 40 minus points. Then the player with the least minus points wins the game. The clever play in Llama is knowing when to pass out of a round. You might end up with lots of minus points, but if the other players end up with more than you, then it's in your favor. And some of the best moments are when multiple players pass and leave one player stuck with loads of cards. If you stay in the round and draw another card, you could get stuck with a Llama, which is worth minus 10 points. The Llamas can only be played on sixes or other Llamas. Once you've played a llama, then players can start from one again. And in Llama Party, there's a special pink llama, which is worth minus 20 points, but you can play it on any card, so it can really get you out of a jam. The game gives you a real incentive to wanna stay in and get rid of all of your cards, because if you do, you're allowed to get rid of one of your tokens, and you can even get rid of one of the black tokens that's worth minus 10 points. In Llama Party, they make things even more interesting with these pink tokens that are worth minus 20 points. So if you're lucky and you get rid of all of your cards, you can go from losing the game to winning it in one fell swoop. Llama is a great game on its own, but if you're able to get hold of Llama Party, it's just a little bit more fun and exciting. Both games are great but Llama Party just takes it up a notch. Those are my five card games that you could play with anyone. If you wanna buy any of them, there are links in the description below. And if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like it, please subscribe to the channel. To support more videos, go to patreon.com forward slash actual I'm John Perkis, thanks for watching. <laughs>